Despite the onslaught and popularity, of course, of small SUV and crossovers, the five-door family hatchback is still a really popular choice, especially here in the UK, accounting for nearly 50% of all new car sales. And of course, despite some manufacturers thinking about leaving the sector, notably Ford with the Focus, many are coming into it, especially with electrified models, to try and soak up the customers that are there. And Peugeot is the latest one with its new E308. So I brought along the uh, Renault Megane E-Tech. Um, 2022 it came out first, but it's a channel favourite, so we're going to put that up against the Peugeot. And I've got the MG4 Trophy extended range in its lovely lurid orange colour. So without further ado, welcome to this week's triple test. And of course, as always, welcome to Auto EV. <laughs> Now, before we get started on this week's triple test between, of course, the Renault Megane E-Tech, the new Peugeot E308 and the MG4 Trophy Extended Range, it is, of course, that time when I'm going to ask you to make sure you are subscribed to the Auto EV channel. Then once you've done that, make sure you've pressed the little bell button down below because then that way you'll get a notification when our next video is uploaded and has gone live. As always, once you've watched the video, if you do enjoy it, make sure you give it a thumbs up and don't forget, leave us your comments down below. Let us know what your thoughts are on the cars that we test such as the, the Renault, the Peugeot and the MG, and of course on the Auto EV channel as a whole. Now because I've got these two with me today, we're going to get cracked straight on and we're going to start with styling. So let's mm. look at the Peugeot first guys. Um, Peugeot's new sort of, I, I think they've moved away from the blandness that they had yeah. during that kind of yeah, naughties kind of period. Yeah. They're getting some of the style back. I quite, of course they've got the new big Peugeot shield rather than the kind of that's Pencil common line. across all three, isn't it? The, the larger logo, isn't it? Yeah, yeah that's it's, true. It's got yeah, because yeah, yeah. yeah, that's got a big optic mm. on the front of it there. I think, I, I like the Peugeot, I do like it. I, I think it's quite a stylish car. Remember this shares its platform underpinnings with the Astra. With the Astra, yeah. Which I think yeah. is quite, okay. it's, it's a nice looking car for an Astra, yeah. but it's an Astra. I think this is a better looking car. Yeah. But I think it's quite heavy at the front. Is that just me? It There's is this quite bulky, bulky, yeah. This bulky kind of... Um, yeah, Point. it just seems like it's kind of yeah. drooping down at the front. It doesn't look quite as sharp as the MG, or it's kind of no, stylish. No, they've got very the short gun. overhangs, haven't they? And, and mm. there is, as you say, there is a lot of bulk over yeah. the front wheels, isn't there, with this? Yeah. Now, um, interestingly, this is the only one of the three you can have with a, an estate version of. They're doing a, a, a yes. estate okay. Yeah. Okay. this, yeah. like um, Vauxhall doing the Astra. But, of course, yeah. MG's got the MG5 for that. That's right. And Renault kind of missed maybe a trick out on that. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I, th I think it's a good-looking car. I like the, I like the blue. I think it's quite a nice spec. It looks quite classy. Would you agree? It does. It, it does. does look classy. Yeah. 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 I kind of like the, the grill treatment. Um, yeah. Or the the, the mock grill. The mock treatment. grill. Yeah. 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 And, and you could have fangs down here, and of course you get the big. I mean, this is their yeah. signature look, isn't it? With it the is. fangs. Yeah, 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 yeah. They run that across the whole yeah. range now. And then, of course, like the old Peugeot used to have the kind of. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's on the, a, on the a side classic nod, isn't it? But it um, is really. It is. Yeah. yeah. Now, MG. Apart from the colour, which is not really a cup of tea. But what do we think? I mean, I, I, I do like the styling of the MG. I, I think the grey is probably the colour for me. Yeah. Uh, I think I the darker colours work better. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, that, I that, think you're right. You know, unless yeah. you're parked outside Halfords, it's kind of... Um, yeah. <laughs> but it, it's quite sharp. It looking, is quite isn't sharp. It? I think it's the best looking car. It's not quite as anonymous as the ZS crossover. Yeah. yeah. It's almost like arrowhead-like, isn't it? Because yeah. you're saying, really comparing the nose to this the, nose, it's kind of a lot you know, more angular. A bit sharper. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I do like it. I think it's a good-looking car, the MG. And, you know, they're bringing out, obviously, the new Cyberster sports car, which is very similar this kind of style so it'll be interesting to see if they do that with the next SUVs going forward you know a bit more kind of sharp and angular and kind of sporty mm. looking so yeah I think it's a I think it's a good looking car yeah I, I, I completely agree I think when it first came out it, it looked it looked really kind of modern and sharp and yeah uh, yeah, yeah it's a good looking car for MG that yeah shame about that color though yeah shame about the color <laughs> I, agree with you. No, I, I mean I going back it. to the Megane I, I still think this is the mm. best looking car yeah, I, 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 it's one I of the agree. Basic cars in the class. Yeah, it's it's just it's the whole thing's just considered as one, isn't it? It's just the, the big wheels, the short overhangs either side. It looks really modern. It yeah. is. But it's a and really it's funny. We're car. saying that this came out in 2022, and the, the Peugeot is new. I still prefer the styling to this. You know, Peugeot. I've kind of they've moved things forward, but yeah. there's some certain bits that you know I still prefer this yeah. over the no, Peugeot. I, I, I absolutely agree with you. I mean, as I say, obviously I've been running this car for a little while now. 
and it still turns my head. It's still one of those things. Yeah. You lock it, you walk away. You You're happy back to walk up to it. And yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think, and I agree with you, Charlie. I think that this is the Techno Plus model. So we'll talk mm. about trims later on, folks. But the, the Techno Plus gets the 20 inch wheels, which yeah, just yeah. fill the arches. And you look at it, and some people think it's going to be like a crossover, but it isn't. Look at the height of it. I know. It's yeah, the yeah. same. It yeah, is yeah, a C yeah. sector hatchback. And Renault have mm. done a great trick with it. Yeah. But yeah, I, I think this is the best looking car. So if you were going to give a one, two, three, well, where would you be, Rod? I'd definitely be um, Megane, then the MG, and actually the Peugeot, I was, I'd put in last, actually. Yeah, yeah I, I think I'm the same. I, I, I love the Megane, so I think I'd put that in first place. And then, as Rod said, the MG, I think it's got that nice sort of sharp modern look. And as nice as this is, I think it would go in third in this. Yeah. We've yeah, got to remember, great. I mean, this is a, a spoiled choice because they're three good cars, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, it's not, yeah, you know, yeah, it's, it's splitting hairs cars, almost. Yeah, yeah. but, but I, I, in a shocking result, I agree with both of you, exactly. I think the, <laughs> I think the Renault is by far oh the gosh. best looking one. I, and then I'd go for the MG, as you say, maybe in a darker colour, that mm. nice dark metallic red or something, or yeah. uh, the grey. And, and as I say, I do like the Peugeot, I want to make that clear. I think yeah. it's a good looking car, Yeah. but in comparison with the other two, these two. it's the least favourite of the three. Yeah, I, I think, think so. so. Yeah. yeah. Now, from the rear, I think, you, you know, I think I, I'm pretty much of an agreement. I still think Megane's the best thing in the rear, but actually I quite like all the back of all three cars. Yeah. I think it's probably the Peugeot's best angle. Yeah. yeah. Well, please you, Brian, they've all got rear wipers. They've all yeah, got rear wipers. Rear they've all got rear wipers. <laughs> yeah, because MG didn't when they first came. No. They didn't. They've added it uh, on, I think last year it got Even added on. they're only this long. But yeah. 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 Well, that's the other thing. Do you know, interesting you say that. That's one thing a lot of people have said about the Megane it's one of the downsides the rear visibility is yes, quite is. poor it's, yeah. because you've got a centre headrest obviously as you should have but it's quite a shallow rear window so that's the one point in the Megane that people have commented on when they've driven it has gone it's quite shallow in the rear yeah. window and these rear three quarters on all, all three cars when you're driving reversing they're quite bulky aren't they, they are quite bulky inside, yeah, so. yeah, yeah I'd probably say what would think the MG's probably got a bit more kind of glass around it so it's a bit easier do you yeah. think I mean, they've all got reverse cameras, haven't they? This, they, yeah. they have, yeah. They have, yeah. yeah. So they've all got reverse cameras. So the most aggressive style is the MG. Yeah, I think so, yeah, with these kind of like spoilers at the top. It yeah. looks, looks really nice, doesn't it? Yeah, <coughs> yeah, I, th I think so. And I do like the kind of light signature. Yeah, the, the light the bar, MGs yeah. And this kind of upswept bit. And remember when I drove the X Power, the, the fast one, it looks the same as this, but a different does, set yeah. of wheels. So actually, they've kept, you could say that's a bit of a cue car, but what they've done with the rest of the range is make them look quite kind of sporty, dare I suggest. Yeah, yeah. Like that one. So, so I do one, like two, it. threes for us all? Well, I, I, I'm still the Megane for me. Yeah. Um, the I, I'm a bit, yeah, I don't, don't know. I do like, as Charlie said, I quite like those kind of twin spoilers and the back lights. I don't know. I think, yeah. I think I might be the same. I think I, I think I'd stick, but I do like the back of the Peugeot. Yeah. I think it's a good looking like car. I'm going to go um, Megane one, Peugeot two, and then MG. An MG. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you, Rod. I, yeah. I think the Peugeot, the back of the Peugeot, and you, you said it looks that little bit better, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. So that would be yeah, yeah Megan first, Peugeot second. Yeah, and then I'm, the MG. I'm I'm in a quandary with these two. The only thing I think you mentioned it, Rod, is because obviously, yeah. It's a multi-energy platform because, yes. of course, it's the only one of the three you can buy with an internal combustion engine. So, of course, you get your, you can get your normal <laughs> fake exhaust tip. So, so, so that's the only thing that maybe lets it down a wee bit for me. But yeah, but I still think they're all good-looking yeah, cars. They are. Yeah. Shall we see how big the boots are now? Yeah. Yes. So, in terms of practicality, the Peugeot has 361 litres of boot space as standard, um, which is all right. And of course, it's got a standard 60-40 split rear seat and also a load through facility. The downside, however, is there's no underfloor storage for the uh, cables. So you do have a cable lying loose in the boot. That's the downside with it. But we can still get three suitcases in. So if you have your big one up at the back there, medium one there, and then a carry-on down the side, but remembering, of course, you've also got to put a cable in there. So, yeah, not bad at all. Now, the MG4 has 363 litres of boot space, so two litres up on the Peugeot. Again, like the Peugeot, has a standard 60-40 rear split on the seat, but it doesn't have a load-through facility. Now, if you do fold the rear seats down, that uh, volume goes up to 1,165 litres. The downside, like the Peugeot, is the cables, but they do at least come in a bag. There's no underfloor storage on the MG4, despite it being a bespoke EV platform. However, 
despite it actually being a slightly bigger boot than the Peugeot, the suitcases, we struggle with them to get them in the same way because of where the parcel shelf is. It does seem to be a slightly shallower boot for some reason. So whilst we put them in the same way, as you can see, the boot won't close now. So that's the downside for the MG4. Now, the Rena Megane has 440 litres of boot space, which is the biggest of the three. The downside that we all agree on, however, is the release for it. It's just this little button here that gets your thumb really, really dirty. None of them have electric boots. In other words, none of them go up normally, but at least the Peugeot and the MG's handles are much higher up. You don't get quite so dirty. But anyway, 440 litres of boot space, standard 60-40 split rear seat, but no load through. Now, if you do fold the rear seats down, that goes up to 1,332, so it's by far the biggest of the three. It's very deep boot as well but you do get underfloor storage so there is a cable storage trough in the back of the Renault whereas the other two don't have that and um, as I say it's a very deep boot so you've got quite a high sill to lift things over whereas the other two have got a bit more kind of flat entry but it does mean you get a much much bigger boot so a large suitcase there a medium one there one carry-on in there and there's still enough space for soft bags or jackets or whatever or even a soft bag on top of the suitcase as well so by far the most commodious in terms of practicality of boot is the Renault but interestingly despite it being on a dedicated EV platform like the MG there's no under front storage and of course you certainly won't get it in the Peugeot because that's a multi-energy platform so in terms of rear accommodation, obviously we're all in the car as you can see. Um, so this is my driving position. Rod, you're what, 5'10"? 5'10", yeah. Charlie, you're the same as me. You're yeah, 5'8". Five five yeah. How do you guys feel for space in the rear of the Peugeot? Headroom is, is, is Head, good. good yeah, 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 yeah. No. I mean, leg room, um, my feet, is that your normal driving this position? This would be my driving position. Yeah, yeah, my feet are a bit cramped under. But, okay. Um, yeah. Good. Good. Yeah, I, I like the way the kind of back of the seat's kind of concave, so mm. it gives you that little bit gives of extra bit knee room. room. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I mean, it definitely needs that because the yeah, this front passenger seat feels quite close to me. But you're not going to get three adults across the back, are you? No. no. But I don't think you maybe get that in any of the cars. In fairness. Yeah, I'm I mean, sure. this head bolster's pushing into my so you need bottom of my back. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, need so those raised. you definitely do. Yeah. Yeah. There's two ports in the back, which is quite good. There's vents. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you also seat pockets. Yeah, and you get Isofix points in the back of so the seat. But yeah. I think the Peugeot also. No, I've just lied to you. It doesn't. I thought yeah. I had them in the front as well. <laughs> <laughs> front of knowledge, Brian. Front of knowledge. Um, yeah, but you, would you go on a journey with this? You know, if we were to go yeah, for a night yeah. or so? If we were yeah. going all the way down to Cornwall, Charlie, yeah. we might get a bit, <laughs> a bit cosy. A bit the testy. <laughs> 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 Brian will be there, yeah. <laughs> and and a centre transmission tunnel, because obviously it's a multi energy car. Yeah. Have you, you've still got that. You don't have a flat floor across the back, do no. you? No, no, no. Yeah. So that's the one downside with sort of like these mucking a multi energy platform cars. That's, yeah, true. You're not, not going to get that. Definitely. But yeah, you you do your short journey in this. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I, yeah, that'll be good. All yeah. right, yeah. let's try the others. Right, MG4 next. Um, well, I've got quite. A, I mean, I'm a shorty. I'm only five eight, so I've got I've got quite a lot of room, and I can get my feet well under that passenger seat. Yeah, How to, do you? To, to me, yeah, it's definitely more spacious in here in the back. Yeah, um, yeah there's a, that feeling of space, and also my feet fit better under under here, and uh, yeah. And you get the flat floor as well, of yeah, course. Yeah, and that's yeah. your driving position, isn't it, Charlie? That's where you. Yeah, it, drive. it is. Yeah, and, and these seats, they they really do hug you. Actually, they're, they're quite quite sporty. Yeah, they've got that kind of nice kind of wrap round in the shoulder. Yeah. That's the one thing I do like about them. Um, the, the only thing I will say it would be nice, and funnily enough, the the, the Peugeot has it a little bit. Would it be nice if you could have a light headliner? Yeah, you yeah, know, definitely. just to just to make it feel lighter, like a light grey headliner. It feels dark in here. It feels it? dark, yeah. but it's doesn't feel claustrophobic if that makes sense there is a lot of space you're absolutely right and i think i prefer going a long, longer journey in the mg rather than the peugeot i'd agree so. with that yeah, yeah. I, I definitely think that i think that's definitely better uh, only the one one port one here, port one no usb vent, port and no vent, vent but, yeah. yeah that's that's a good point yeah. there's a tiny little kind of storage cubby there there's and then you get seats and then you get some you get, can put phone your, holders yeah well. some phone yeah. holders yeah <laughs> that's quite put your polar mints in it's a little bit plastic like isn't it like in, in places i think yeah, I, I don't think the materials, it doesn't feel quite special. The quality you know. is definitely less than the, the Peugeot. Yeah, the Peugeot, the yeah, the Peugeot certainly feels a more yeah. upmarket car. Yeah. Would that be yeah. a fair thing yeah, to say? The materials so. that you see, yeah. the, no, the definitely seat materials sure. and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, shall we check out the Megane then for space? Let's do it. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. Right. Megan now, the first thing that immediately strikes me is the floor feels much higher. Yeah, yeah. It's my, pushing my feet, your legs up. Feet can it? only just 
fit under the uh, yeah. <laughs> sort of I clamping my toes. Yeah, in. I can't get kind of there. Yeah. Do you think on a longer journey that would tell and you'd be a bit more uncomfortable? I think maybe, yeah, yeah. if I'm not. There's plenty in Neerum. Yeah, pl- plenty Neerum. And again, Headroom, Headroom, Headroom like the other two, is fine. Again, it'd be nice to see maybe yeah. a lighter headlining yeah. or a panoramic roof or something like that. And it's, you know, it's but dark in here, especially with that kind of little letterbox kind of back window. That's it. That's what we're saying earlier. A lot of people commenting on that little shallow back window. Yeah. It doesn't feel quite as, although it is spacious, it doesn't feel it because it feels no. a bit, because t- of the darkness. I think you're right, Charlie. Yeah. Actually, but, the three, this is my favourite for the interior. Oh, the definitely. Oh, yeah. it, the fit, materials. finished materials. Without doubt, Spot on. and it's solid as a rock as well. There's not a squeak yeah. or rattle out of this car, yeah. Um, all the rest of it. Um, two USB ports down there, a face vent, yeah, and storage is the seat back pockets and door bins, which in the McGann are lined with carpet, yeah. Yay. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would say, of it's interesting, isn't it? Because there's, there's a positive for each one of them. Mm. Mm. So, although this is a bespoke platform again, although it's, it, it's flat across the back floor. We both feel that we're, our legs have been oh, pushed right the, up. Yeah, we're coming knees up. You can kind of see that, can't you? Um, and we can't get our feet underneath the back seats. I guess, I mean, if this were, you were using it as a family car, there would be shorter legs in the back. But yeah, yeah potentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I have a Katie in this car. I mean, she sits in the back. Even on a booster seat, she can put her feet on the floor. Right. Okay. So that tells that, so that yeah. the floor is slightly higher up. I mean, know? I've had three teenagers in the back going to London and back. Yeah. And, and they seem they fell asleep. You know, they're, sort of, they're clearly quite comfortable in here. Right. So, yeah. So, again... What we're saying is, all three cars are good for family cars. Yeah. There's areas of each that were better than other than the others. So what we're thinking is a bit of a draw in terms of rear seat space. Yeah, potentially. Or do we think? It, it's still, do you it's think still the MG's a hard better? Decision to say, you know, one's miles ahead of the rest. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. I think there's all... compromises on each, isn't there? Yeah, and as you say, although we like the MG for its space, we've all agreed that actually the materials in the MG and it feels quite dark. Mm. It's not as good as something like the Peugeot or the Megane, whereas the Megane feels like there's less foot space, whereas there's great foot space in the Peugeot. And it, yes, yeah. you're right. Yeah. So it's pretty much a draw, there's, really. There's all no th- clear winner, is there's it? There's no clear winner. All three are going to be fine for rear passengers. Yeah. Perfect. All right, let's do the front of the interior. Okay. Right, the Peugeot. Now, we haven't done a full road test review of the Peugeot. This is its road test review. Um, but also, I've been using the car. And I, I have to admit, I, I do... Um, I like the interior of this car. And yeah. I agree with you, Charlie. So I've just switched it on. I, I agree with you in terms of you know, the difference between the MG and here, like the Megane. This feels like a premium interior. That definitely does. Yeah, I mean, all these buttons, they're, they're like machined metal, aren't they? There's, yeah. It's just got a, a nice premium touch. And I'll tell you what, it's much nicer in here than the Astra. Yes. The Astra feels very kind of basic and stuff, whereas the Peugeot does feel, you know, scored a VW, it's almost an Audi, yeah, yeah. you know, sort of like levels of design quality. And we're seeing them really, really like the exterior style. And they're really coming back, mm. I think, with a lot of it. The big thing about this is that kind of steering wheel setup, the small, and looking over the top. You do have to get used to that, don't uh, you? I think if you're someone that's very short, I think you're going to struggle to find a right position because yeah. normally you're looking through the steering wheel. That's it, that's right. And, you know, and I think, you know, maybe you're right in saying that. If you were interested in this car, maybe you'd want to do maybe a longer test drive. Definitely, right? definitely. To get used to that because it does take a lot of getting used to where it's kind of down in your lap yeah, and yeah. looking over the top. Yeah. Um, these are interesting. These eye toggle, what yeah. they call so you can you can um, thingy these to how you want, you know. To, to I really the, like these. What you want, and of course, as you said earlier, the graphics mm. and everything just seems much more considered, considered, and yeah. more designed. Definitely. Um, and you've still got the physical buttons, as you say, with the kind of metalized kind of feel about them. Yeah, I love this layout. I think it's brilliant. Uh, uh, the sound system's good as well, and all the vents. It's a really nice height, I think, for everything. Like that. Yeah, the integrated vents yeah. across the top of the dash is really good as well, isn't it? Seats are comfortable. Yeah. Seats are nice yeah. I like the seats again I'd maybe like a little bit more support under the thigh but maybe that's just me maybe I need to do a longer drive in the car to get used to it but I think this is where the premium is, is seen isn't it over the MG yes yeah without without shadow of a doubt um, storage is good again so you've got yeah. a couple of cup holders there you've got uh, wireless charging down in there you've also got a couple of little uh, armrest cubbies and door bins uh, although they're not lined like they are in the McGann mm. that's the only downside but certainly I, I agree with you the touch points yeah, you have, have it. you tried the cruise control? No, it's almost autonomous. You, you, you set it and, it and it breaks and it drives for you. So if you're in slow moving traffic, you literally really? almost, almost just with the steering wheel, but it, it's a really yeah. good system. From the, well, that's, that's an important point to mention. Yeah, yeah. I, I just think everything in here feels quality, definitely, uh, and, 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 and visually quality as well. As yeah. you say, when you look at the graphics, I love their sort of like eye cockpit design. 
um, that they've got there. As I say, I don't mind this small steering wheel that you look over the top, no, but no. I agree with you. If you're looking at this car, it's certainly something to take for a longer drive. To not get, for everyone, is not, it? It's not going to be for everyone, but no. yeah. But I think a, a real, yeah, a winner of an interior. Definitely. I, I'm not sure I'd prefer it over the Megane. I, I'm not sure if I'd prefer this over the Megane and the Megane over this. I'd probably say it's a bit of a... Bit of a par. Bit of a par yeah. for the two of them. Um, with the MG... Definitely lower down. Lower down, yeah. definitely. Right. Okay, Good. perfect. Right, and with Charlie in the MG4 now. Charlie, thoughts on the interior of the car? I, I, I like it. It's... Um, it's not as premium as the other two. I mean, yeah. when you when you haven't been in the other two and you're in this, you think everything's like nice and, and it's quite nicely finished. But as soon as you step in those other two, you're like, all oh, this does definitely feel cheaper. Yeah. Uh, and I have some big issues with the infotainment as well. Yeah, interestingly, you know, because obviously we've driven, again, we've driven the MG4 extensively in both standard trophy and also the, the X-Power. So I'll pop links up to those road test review. But yeah, I, I agree. The more you use that infotainment, the more frustrating it becomes. Yeah. Do you agree? I mean, yeah, I mean, just when I first got in it, just, just to find the heating controls, which we need at the moment, because it's freezing. Yeah. And it's just, just this tiny bit up here that you have to scroll down. I mean, once, once you've got used to it and you know what you're doing, it, it, yeah. it, it's adequate, but it's still not very intuitive. When you've got some, we're just saying, uh, Rod and I were just saying in the Megane, you've got the physical heater controls that are there all the time. So it's yeah. just a really quick, you can get in, pump up the temperature of, yeah, yeah. you know, that, that, as you say, to, to scroll down. You can assign favourites on these steering wheel buttons, right, which yeah. I found out, which is quite good. So if you want your heating there, but again, it's still, it's like a two-step process then still, isn't it? It is. Press the button, yeah. then go on to it rather than just a, a, an actual button. Yeah, I mean, this screen is tiny as well. Yeah, it's I mean, quite busy as well, isn't it, something? Do you think that? It's, it's busy and it's not very designed. Like the others have got nice kind of graphics and fonts and things like that. Like the power regeneration, it's, it's a tiny little symbol yeah. in the corner. I mean, for me, I, I struggle to see that. Yeah. Nice open feel to the car though, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it's, it's really open here. You've got loads of storage. You can it, see it has. It's cup got holders and sliding kind of covers. And again, the wireless the charging. charging pad up there. And it's yeah. wireless. Oh no, it's not. It's wired CarPlay, isn't it, on this one, I think. It, yeah. You've got to have the yeah, wiring, yeah. so that's maybe the down, one of the downsides with yeah. the, the Renault's wireless. But I agree with you on the materials. I think you know it, it's nice, and if you had, if you just jumped into it, you'd go, "This is good. This is nice." Yeah. But yeah. then when you step in the other two, you realise that it it, it, it is a, a, a grade down, if you like. It's it not definitely quite. Is. It doesn't yeah. feel as premium. That's the word you use, which is without good. a doubt. I like the seats. I, I agree with you on the seats. Although, as I say, I'd quite like to have a little bit more of a kind of tilt yeah. and under under the, thigh support. Um, the steering wheel heats up. Yeah. Quite, quite fast. Yeah. Uh, whereas on the other two, a little bit slower to heat up, which Interesting. I Interesting, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then Rod was saying that, you know, you, those are the kind of things you're starting to expect and see on modern cars, like heated steering wheel and stuff. Definitely. Like that. Yeah, so yeah. that's it. So, yeah, so I, I think it's a, it's a good effort. It's well spec. It's well spec. Yeah. Good effort. Again, um, we like it. But that's the most infuriating thing, would you say? I think so. needs to... Just in comparison with the others. Yeah. So the facelift car, MG, that needs to be better. <laughs> Right, so front of the Megane, what's your thoughts then, Rod? My thoughts, out of the three of them, this is definitely my favourite place to be. Yeah, um, I'd agree. The, the fit, the finish, and the way the screen wraps around, the infotainment system, everything seems to work, and for me, it was kind of instantly comfortable in yeah, here. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I've um, done loads of miles in this car. You can see I've yeah. done two and a half thousand miles yeah. in this car. And I, I completely agree with you. Um, it's important to say this. We're going to. This isn't a, a massively big detailed review because we've done the Megane so much. So if you want to see a more detailed review of the Megane, I'm going to pop up a link um, so you can click on that video once you've watched this one, obviously, mm. and go and have a look at that one. But yeah, I completely agree with you. Yeah, I think it's it's the nicest looking. It's the the fit and finish. It's solid as a rock. It's really good. And it's a cold morning this morning, and um, yeah. I'm saying that. With modern cars, I mean heated steering wheel, heated yep. seats, um, the yellow piping around which contrasts everything. Yeah, lots of storage. Area. Loads of storage. Yeah, nice place to have your phone to charge. Yep, it's kind of it, it works the best out. Screens the are easy to see. One thing that a lot of people have said, obviously, because the European Megans get a much bigger infotainment screen, but actually right. I get on okay with the smallest. I've been using it and I get on okay with it. It's got Apple CarPlay, it's wireless, mm. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, so that I, well, that works well. I like the layout of the screen. How do you get on with the kind of three column stocks down that side? Are you okay with it? Um, yeah, I mean, it is a bit busy. And, a bit busy uh, on that, that right really side. One thing, yeah. You know, the, the personal preference, people may not want their column here, but yeah. Um, yeah. It, it, but it's difficult it is a bit to fault. Busy. 
it's difficult to fault. It's just a different way of doing it compared yeah. to the other two. Um, it, it, it does look a bit busy, yeah. um, but once you get used to it. Physical controls for the heating and ventilation, which is quite nice. You don't have to go into the screen to use that. That's, that's quite nice. Old fashioned, yeah. well, old fashioned in a way. Yeah. But, um, and yeah, bags of storage, you know, you can get a coffee cup and yeah. there's another one there for your water bottle, this sliding armrest. And, uh, there's enough room for your baguette. Or there's enough room for my baguette, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and there's loads of space down there. So, yeah, yeah, I think, from, I, I agree with you, everything you say about this. I, I love the interior of this yeah, car. Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely by far the best out of the three. Cool. Now the Peugeot just comes with one battery option which is a 50.8 kilowatt hour size and that's its usable capacity. Now according to WLTP figures Peugeot reckon you should get 260 miles out of the car between charges. Its charging speed however is pegged at 100 kilowatts which is lower than the other two but because it's a slightly smaller battery capacity it still means you can go from your benchmark 10 to 80 percent in 28 minutes. From a 7 kilowatt wall box you're looking to go from flat to full in just over 8 hours. The Megane only comes in one battery size, which is a 60 kilowatt hour battery. Um, the range of that is, to, again, 260 miles, or that's the WLTP figures. Um, from 10% to 80% is listed as 30 minutes again, um, so, so quite similar in some ways to the Peugeot. Um, and then the MG? The MG, yeah, so this is the uh, MG4 Trophy extended range version. Uh, the, the, the cheaper models have got the smaller batteries. It's a 77 kilowatt hour battery on this car. It is a 77 it? kilowatt so battery, yeah, it's, which is 323 miles, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, so it's, it's the longest range of the three, and obviously being the extended range car. Yeah, but it takes slightly longer to charge, doesn't it? So it's a 40 minute charge, I think. Yeah, to go from your 10 to 80%. From 10 to 80%, yeah. and then. Yeah, on, on the three pin, it's 13 hours, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's quite, it's quite, it's quite a long time to go on that because, again, the size of the battery. One thing I will say, obviously, because obviously I've been using them again, yeah. I'm not getting the range out of that I car. think it's this cold weather as well. The cold weather doesn't help, but I charged it to 100% yesterday, and it was, it was only showing it was less than 200 miles. Really? Yeah, and obviously I've done quite a few long trips in it, but what it does do is it kind of, kind of recalibrates itself a little yeah, bit. you mentioned this before. Yeah. It adjust on the route. It right? seems to adjust yeah. on the route, and actually, once you get into maybe a gate, or you're using the regen a bit better, mm -hmm. so, but it's not quite as efficient as, as, as Renault make it out to be. Whereas Peugeot are making a big thing about the efficiency of, of, of this car, saying that although it's a smaller battery, it's much more efficient, the motor's better and things like that. But I still think, without doubt, the, the MG... Oh yeah, might, with, that, with that extra range, it, you've got, got much more confidence in, yeah. in journeys, haven't you, over the other two, I think? Yeah, much more. So yeah. if you're using them for longer journeys, MG4 does certainly seem to be the one. And I think that car, you know, and we'll talk about price, but I think that car at that price is the better option than the, the X-Power, the, the performance one. Yes. That's what I would rather have, because it's still a good car, still a quick car. Yeah, because the X-Power and extended range are a similar price, aren't they? That's right, yeah. 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 So we're going to go MG wins here. I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We haven't done a big long, long drive in the Peugeot, but how have you guys been finding the efficiency when you've been driving it? Been all right? I, I don't like the, the brake regeneration. It's, it's not yeah. enough. It's... Um, yeah, I didn't like that about it. Okay, but uh, the Peugeot doesn't seem quite as sharp or as nimble as the MG yeah. driving wise. As yeah, well. but performance wise, um, yeah, no, Megane and the Peugeot are similar. I yeah, think I think efficiency. Yeah, I think the MG MG is a clear winner here. I would definitely no, I suggest, so. folks. Yeah, so if you yeah. want a long range car, it's the MG4. All right, so let's take the um, Peugeot on the road first and see how it is to drive. Um, it's the least powerful of the three. So it's a single motor car, obviously, uh, motor mounted up at the front and delivering 156 brake horsepower, which means your 0 to 60 time is 9.8 seconds. Now, look, you know, we've got used to sort of like electric cars having sort of like this neck snapping acceleration, and you don't get that in the Peugeot at all. It just accelerates, like maybe like you'd have seen, like maybe a 1.4 litre you know petrol engine hatchback doing you know sort of like four or five years ago so it's not exactly a quick car it is a very nice car to drive however because it's quite refined it's quite quiet it's you know it's got a nice compliancy uh, in the chassis not as good as the Renault in fairness you can still feel surface imperfections uh, coming up through the car that's the one thing that I will say um, we mentioned it before, this small steering wheel does take an awful lot of getting used to. So it's something that, as I said, if you are looking at the Peugeot, take it for a good long test drive because you'll be adjusting it continuously until you find it um, suiting you 
um, you, you know, right at the very uh, sort of like end of the drive almost. So get a good test drive in it to see whether or not you can get on with this. I don't mind it so much, but Charlie made the point it did take him a lot of time to get used to. Um, we're coming up quite a kind of steep hill there, and as I say, when you kind of put your foot down, it, it does feel like it's a little bit on the kind of sluggish side, the Peugeot. Now you do have different drive modes, and of course you can access them down here through this drive mode button. So once we kind of go from normal and then into sport, a bit like the Astra when I drove it last month, it doesn't feel night and day was worth of difference. The throttle response is a little bit sharper, but it it still feels quite sluggish in comparison with the other two. So yeah, and I can't really feel there's a massive perceptible difference between the two modes, between normal and sport. Of course, the last mode is eco, and that dulls everything down. Now, what the Stellantis cars do in terms of their modes is they reduce the power of the engine rather than just dulling things down. So actually, you get a lot less when you're in normal and eco mode then you not get in sport mode. It's only when you're in sport mode you get that full 156 horsepower, which is a bit disappointing. The steering's quite quick. It's quite nice, as I say. You get used to this, uh, the little wheel quite quickly, I think. Um, and as I say, once you get used to it, the kind of darty feel of it, it's not, um, it, it, it doesn't put you off so much. It's quite a nice kind of feel to the steering itself. The brakes are better than they used to be. Um, and the other kind of Stellantis cars, there isn't that wooden feel at the um, at the top of the pedal. You do get a you know a reasonable amount of bite as soon as you apply the brakes. And as usual, you only get one level of brake regen with the car. So pressing that B button brings the brake regen into play, and it's not as powerful as some other cars. So there's nothing behind me. I'm in B mode. I'm braking. I'm braking. I'm braking. I'm not touching the foot brake and it doesn't bring it to a complete halt, it brings it down to a creep. And as I say, it doesn't feel as powerful as maybe being able to adjust it more. Now, Peugeot are gonna change this on the E3008. It's gonna have different levels of brake regen on that car. So that's one area that they are gonna improve. So, summary. Nice car to drive, very comfortable. Nice driving position, as I say, once you get used to the, the, the little steering wheel, there's a really nice driving position. Little bit of pitter patter at low speed ride but high speed ride is very very good the refinement is excellent it's very quiet it feels very premium in here as we've been talking about everything's within easy reach it's a lovely design of cockpit it's a good car the Peugeot but is it better than the other two let's find out now immediately jumping into the MG4 trophy extended range you can feel the extra power this is 241 brake horsepower um, that this car gets, so it's even more than the standard uh, MG4 Trophy. Um, not to 60 time, it's the quickest of the three at 6.6 .6 seconds, and it does feel it. You can really feel, you know, sort of like there's a real sort of like urgency to the way the car puts you down the road. And not in a scary way, not like, you know, sort of like a Tesla, and I, I do think, having driven the X power and having driven it on a distance, I think this is the pick of the range, I really do, because I think it's quick enough, it's got the rear drive chassis, so it's a single motor, but it's mounted at the back of the MG4, you don't have the corruption um, of the X power in the front axle, when obviously the, the power at the front is, is corrupting the steering, so the steering is literally just at the front of the car, there's no power going through the front wheels, which is really, really nice, and I do like it. I think the MG4 is a really good car, uh, you know, in standard guys it's, it's exceptionally good, it drives well, um, you know, as I say, there's a, a nice kind of balance in the chassis, there's a nice fluency to the car as well, and I think, you know, in terms of the power, this is just right, I think, um, I don't think you need the power of the X power. Anyway, um, there's a little bit less refinement to the car than you get in the Peugeot, and by that I mean the last bit of polish. There's a little bit more wind noise from it. It's not a noisy car, but you do feel there's a bit of perceptible wind noise, uh, a bit more perceptible wind noise coming from it into the car. And also in terms of its chassis, well, it's good enough um, and it's very, very good at what it does. 
you can just feel there's a tiny little bit more movement in the chassis as well as you pop it down the road. The suspension's not quite as compliant. There's a little bit more interference uh, comes through the car from the road surface. Um, obviously, the safety systems that's coming up um, as I'm hustling it down the road here tell me I'm going too close to the centre of the, the road as well, which is, well, rather annoying if I'm honest with you but that's a lot of these kind of Chinese manufacturers as they're coming to Europe are fitting these safety systems to get a higher Euro NCAP um, uh, ratings and that's one of the things you get see you can turn them off but they always default on right brake regeneration yes it does have it but you've got to go into the screen to set it up so you've got to delve into that screen to choose the level of brake regen that you want which is really annoying although like we said earlier, you could set it up as one of your favourites um, on here, but again, it's just the kind of two-stage process. Whereas on the Megane, it's the puddles behind the steering wheel, or the Peugeot, where obviously just the B button down the, the side of the transmission tunnel. So that would be preferable. But I do think this is the best MG4. I really like this car. This drives well. It's a much sportier drive. Uh, than the Peugeot and um, it's on a par with the Renault as well the way that it hustles you down the road in terms of its chassis as I say it's not quite as polished as the other two but it is very very good and I do like it the steering as I say you don't have the corruption with having the front mounted motor so that's good and it is a nice kind of meaty feel to it on the whole really excellent car the MG4 very good so, the Megane splits the other two in terms of its power and its performance. It's 217 brake horsepower and a 0 to 60 time of around about 7.5 seconds. Now, as I said, we've tested the Megane quite extensively uh, on Auto EV, not just road test it, but obviously this is my long term test car. So, I've been driving this car for the last two and a half thousand miles. So, I've said quite a lot about it, but just to summarise, let me tell you a little about the Megane if this is your first time visiting us. It's superb. It is absolutely superb. The blend of comfort, refinement, performance, chassis balance is absolutely without question one of the best things about this car. It's just right in terms of its performance levels as far as I'm concerned. It's about right. It doesn't feel too, um, too fast. You know, like Tesla nip snappingly fast. You feel it could handle a little bit more power. You feel like it could handle the same sort of power as the MG has, but it is going through the front wheels. It is a front wheel drive car, the Megane, whereas obviously the MG is rear wheel drive. But even so, the steering doesn't feel that corrupted at all. In fact, I'd say of the three cars, the Megane has the nicest steering feel. It's got the nicest weight behind it and just sort of like the nicest overall feel to it. Now the chassis is exceptional in terms of the spring and damper ratings. They've got this absolutely just right in my opinion and Renault chassis engineers are among the best in the business. You only have to drive a Renault Sport Clio to understand they know what they're doing when it comes to this and this is no exception. This just feels right. The way it deals with bumps, whether they're low speed or high speed, is absolutely the best of the three cars here. It is superb. So going from that, where you've got excellent steering, excellent chassis balance, you've got a real sort of like sporty feeling car. But what it does then also do is it adds refinement to its bow as well because it's exceptionally quiet. It's also exceptionally comfortable. Not just the driving position, but the seat, your relationship to all the controls. It feels absolutely spot on. And in my opinion, of the three cars, it's the best to drive. There's no doubt about it. And I do believe my two colleagues feel exactly the same way about it. Now, you can adjust the brakes with the Megane as well, the regen amount. You've got two paddles behind the steering wheel, which I always feel is the best way of doing it. So you can take the regen off completely, so it just coasts, for instance, you're on a motorway, or you've got one, two, three, four levels of regen as well. So, you know, it's one pedal driving. If that's what you want, you can add it on here. So it allows you that flexibility that maybe the other two don't quite give you and certainly in the MG's case it does, but you've got to delve into the screen to get it. This is nice and easy access here. 
You've got different drive modes, or as Renault call it, multi-sense, which is this button on the steering wheel, and I can press that, and I can go from eco, sport, personal, or comfort. And obviously the personal, or perso as they call it, means you can set the car up how you want it, so individual mode effectively, and just scroll through to that, and that gives you exactly how you want it. So again, the adaptability of the car is probably the best of the three as well, the way you can set the car up to be how you want it to be is the better of the three. As I say, it's difficult to fault the way that the Renault actually drives. Um, as I say, it feels sporty when you want to get a hustle on. As I say, the comfort um, that you get from the car, the long distance comfort, and funnily enough, obviously with the MG4, the X Power, I drove that car to Scotland, and I've driven this car to Scotland, and the MG4 is good, it's really good, it's got a nice seating position, a nice driving position, but this is better. I really, really like this car, and when the man from Renault comes to take this away from me, I'm going to, that's going to be a very, very difficult day for me. Yeah, this is superb. So with regard to pricing, um, the Megane starts at 34500 and um, this one we have is uh, stacked up at uh, 37000 and the top of the range one is 38000 38500 so uh, yeah, no, competitive-ish price for that. Yeah, so with the, with the MG, the range actually starts at 27, which is quite a low kind of entry point, but this one is actually 36500 for the extended range. This one with the metallic paint, so it's 37 and a half, which puts it exactly the same as the X-Power, but it's quite a jump from the, the starting point. However, the Peugeot starts at £40,000. Oh. This one here, the Allure specification with this metallic paint, which is lovely, is just under £41,000. Yeah. It is, <laughs> yeah. Now, it's not a cheap car, this. No. I know we've all said in terms of how it feels inside and stuff, it is quite premium feeling, but that is a big jump up in terms of price, isn't it? Yeah, it starts at 40 grand. Yeah, definitely. Value, definitely. Yeah. See, Stellantis Group, you know, with the Astra and now this, and then obviously, you know, the Corsa as well, that, you know, they're, they're, they're asking punchy money for them. And I'm not sure they're quite there yet in terms of making them feel justified for that money. I don't know how you guys feel. Well, I mean, we're talking about the refinement in there and that's matched by the Megane. I mean, it's, that's, that's, the, that's the value. And that's it, isn't it? You know, Renault have realigned the prices of the Megane because the new Scenic's coming out and obviously we know there are new Renault 5's coming out. Yeah. Um, so it's places as well. And, that, and we, we know that's going to be a real price-led car almost, Oh, definitely, it, you know? yes. Very so I think they've, they've moved that right. I mean, I mean that's quite good value for money, I think. I mean, it's not cheap, but it's quite good it value for money. Yeah, as you say, now they've readjusted it. Yeah. And in, in, in this lineup, then, you know, that is the, the, the value out of the pricing range. Without right? doubt, without yeah. doubt. Now, the MG's always been the kind of value for money king. It has, yeah, you know, yeah. But as you say, the headline figure of £27,000 is for the SE model with the smaller battery. But even so... Massive jump up. Big jump up. Yeah. But even so, £37,000-ish £37 for a 300 mile plus range plus yes. good equipment levels yeah, yeah. and seven year warranty yeah, yeah three yeah. year warranty on these two that's the thing isn't it you know yeah. so in terms of value mm. we've got to say it's the mg uh, Take, yeah takes first sure. place for that i think so but i do think the renault's a really solid second because that's a that's a lot of car now they've realigned that price point and I'm struggling with this at 40 grand. It's too much, I it's think. It's too much money for this So you're car. saying the value is in the warranty? And that, the yeah. value's in the warranty. I think yeah. you get the bigger range, yeah. you get the bigger, you the longer warranty. Mm. You still get a nice car, because we've all agreed. Yeah. It's not as premium feeling as the other two, no. as we've both said. So in terms of if that's what you're looking for, yeah. range and, you, you know, sort of like, you know, sort of like, um, uh, you know, your best value for money, sort of like, you know, what, what do you most buck for your... Sorry, most bang for your buck. Yeah, yeah, it has to be the MG. Yeah, but I don't think the Renault's is far behind now because of the price that is, as you see, a big jump up from twenty-seven grand. Yeah, for but sure. But that I think is well out of its depth. Yeah, I think we're all agreed on that. Yeah. So as we've said, the C sector family hatchback, when it comes to electric cars, is alive and well, especially thanks to these three manufacturers: Renault, Peugeot, and MG. But of course. In auto EV tradition, there has to be a winner. There has to be a one, two, three. Definitely. So. Rod, let's start with you. What what do you like? What don't you like about the three cars we've got here? Give me some points. What you like? Yeah, and don't I'll, like. I'll start with the Megane. Um, 
it is a refined car. It's mm. kind of, um, the interior is nice. It feels when you sit in there, a good place to be. It's, um, you know, I like the wheels. I like the styling. It's, um, when you get out of the Megane and go into the MG, it's a marked difference yeah. between yeah. the quality of the interior on, really on that. Yeah. Um, one of the, you know, the bits I don't like quite so much just about the Megane is the, uh, is the, the boot. Yeah, opening, yeah, which yeah. is quite fiddly, and you get a black thumb. It seems a bit afterthought. It, it does yeah. seem as afterthought. Yeah, I agree with yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, the charging panel, which is something that you mentioned, Brian, yeah. on that left-hand side on the front, is kind of unusual. Until you start using it, you're pulling the cable it's across the front of the car. Yeah, yeah. It's awkward. Yeah. But is these two are like a normal, did I suggest, petrol cap yeah, at the back yeah. of the car that you just plug in when you reverse engine. So, so you yeah, reverse yeah, that, in. That's and, it. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, the MG and the Peugeot. The Peugeot is the last is, is the latest car mm. you know, mm. that we've, we've kind of got in, and it's, again, it's really refined um, inside. The interior is really nice. Yeah. Um, kind of did think that was a a lot less powerful after being oh, the other yeah. two definitely yeah, yeah um, definitely you know as a as an electric car it kind of felt a bit more sluggish and because we've been used to electric cars being quite quick that's right yeah that's probably it, it yeah. you know as you say you, especially when you drive them I mean, these over 200 horsepower these other two whereas that's 158 horsepower it's, it's not only 10 seconds to 60 or something isn't yeah it? which which i suppose for a, like a 1.4 hatchback yeah. 10 years ago oh. would have been fine yeah but because as you say we've got used to the the electric cars being much faster Definitely. It, it does feel more sluggish. I mean, a, a compelling thing about the MG is the warranty, as we mentioned. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, there's kind of pros and cons because they're so close in this whole kind of scheme of things. You're ch choosing one, you, you know, you have to look at all these details. Yeah, so, absolutely um, right. I mean, there's not a bad car here. I think no, that's no, the, that's no, the important thing to discuss. And there's, there's plus points for each and one, and there's negative points mm. for each one. Charlie, how do you feel? What, what's your, why are you feeling um, about the cars? What's your I do, I do like the MG. I think it drives really well. It's, mm. it's, it's a kind of sporty drive, isn't it? Yeah. And it's, it's, it's got the power there, and that extended range version. You, you've got no worries with mileage with that. Yeah. Which, which is, which I, is and they have been very good at kind of doing what they say. The efficiency is good, which is one part of the Renault that's not been that impressive yeah. since yeah. I've had the car. You know, in yeah, fairness. Yeah. But and, the and infotainment on that is. is it's clunky, isn't it? It's, it's clunky. It's, it's difficult to see. It's, it's, it's not in the same league as. The it's other not. Two. It doesn't feel as well designed, perhaps, no. on no. the interior and the usability of the the functions inside. And it's and as you say, when you get in that car, first of all, you go, "Oh, this is quite nice. This is all right. You know, it's fine." Mm. But then, when you jump another two, you realise how good they really are in yeah, terms of exactly. the quality materials and the build and everything else. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, two other things we should mention. <laughs> um, We've had a bit of an electrical issue, yeah. like Brian, you know. Yeah, we, the alarm system. He knows a bit yeah. more about this, but the alarm has been a bit... Yeah, well, we've had quite a lot of comments from mm. owners of them again saying it's, it's quite a similar thing. It seems to be a problem with the wiring of it, yeah. which I think Renault, are, they, they seem to be getting on top of now. Some people are saying they've had the car at the dealers and they're getting it fixed. It's something to do with the sensors up in the window and the way oh, yeah. they're wiring, the, right. the alarm's done. But yeah, it, it goes off. Right kind of, you, you lock it and walk away from it. And, Two minutes later, the alarm starts going off, it which is, is very it's a bit annoying. You know, it's six o'clock in the morning when you're trying to leave for work and <laughs> the alarm's going off. You know, so. and, and the other thing we should mention as well is the colour of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a bit wooden. Yeah, I they, don't know. They do it in 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 quite a few other colours as well. Yeah, which yeah. we've much other colours are available. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe the rather than easy jet orange. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's a, it. I mean, the grey. It looks lovely in the grey. Yes, like the grey. yeah, yeah. I think it's a good looking car. Oh, I agree. I think yeah, I, agree. I think the styling of the MG is a really good looking car. That colour best does nothing design. for it though. No, it does nothing for <laughs> it. But I think that's the best design in terms of you know the ZS and the other and the MG5, which are a bit. They looked a bit anonymous when this came out. You go, oh yeah, it's a really sharp looking car. Yeah, I like yeah. that. I really do. It kind of lives up to the MG kind of heritage. Yes. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. It really, in, in some ways, yeah. The fact that it drives really well and it, it's got that kind of a sharp edge look. Yeah, I think they've done well with that. Yeah, yeah. So I guess we should do our famous one, one two, two, three. three. So let's start with you, Rod. Let's have a one, two, three from you. Okay, for me, um, I'm going to go Megan one. And between the two of these, uh, you know, we are talking minimal. I would go MG next. I prefer driving the sharpness of driving on the yeah. MG over yeah. the uh, the Peugeot. Yeah. So my one, two, three would be Megan. MG, Peugeot. Peugeot. Charlie. Yeah, I, I think I'm probably the same. I, yeah. I, I love the, uh, the, the Renault Megane. It's The interior is lovely, all the kind of textures, and the, I think that's going to look good for a long time, that yeah. car. It's, mm. it's almost like a classic look. Yeah. Um, yeah, MG second, because I love the driving dynamics. Um, and then the price of the Persia, I think yeah. that just kills it. Yeah. You know? as, yeah. as, as nice as it is inside, and I, I do love the interior. 
it's a premium product, but a premium price. Premium product, premium price, exactly. It's, right. it's a decision maker, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Part. And, and it's not like it's, you know, a grand above the no. other two. It's, you know, it's 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 over. It's forty-one grand. Yeah. You know, it's four thousand pounds more than the other two. Yeah. It's yeah. a big chunk of change, That's a isn't it? That's considerable part of the decision, isn't it? Yeah. In, in my world, but yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely for sure. Yeah. So that's my one, two, three. And Brian? Well, I hate to say this, but I'm in agreement with both of you. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's, there's there's not enough to dislike about the Megane to put me off it. I, th- I, I, I think that it's the best car in the class. I love it. It's one of the best EVs I've driven. I genuinely love that car. I really, really do. I think it's sharp looking, as you said, Rod. I think the style of it, mm. I agree with you, Charlie, it still looks modern and fresh. You lock it, hopefully the alarm doesn't go off, and you walk away and you turn around and you still look at it and go, yeah. good looking car. Yes, yeah. You know, and it really is. And to drive, it's refined. I've done big miles in that car and it's just brilliant. Yeah, yeah. I, again, I agree with both of you. The driving dynamics of the MG is compelling. I it think is. it's a really good car. I think yeah. it's the best product to date. I think, you know, they're really well and truly back. I like the way it drives. I agree with both of you as well. The interior does let it down in terms yeah. of the the, the fit and finish of some of the materials the infotainment is very clunky I agreed but extended range battery with you know the bigger miles um, the seven year warranty yeah that's a big and you know and okay yes it is the same price as the Renault but even so it's still good value for money given what you get with it it is yeah. and then the Peugeot Thud I really like this car I do yes, like it yes, I prefer it yes. to the Astra um, but there's not enough pluses to, for me to justify the extra cost of the Peugeot over the other two. Yeah, I agree. And again, I agree. again, if if it was maybe the same performance, you'd maybe go, oh, you'd yeah. maybe swither a bit more. But because then the performance is lacking the other two as well, yeah. it's just too much of a it negativity. Seem value for money at the moment. And as I say, it's not a bad car at no, all. No, I no, think no. if somebody buys that, they'll be really they'll pleased be with it. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it's third place. So for me, Megan, MG, Peugeot. Yeah. Unanimous. Yeah. Unanimous, again. <laughs> um, folks, thank you ever so much for watching yet another episode of Auto EV. As always, please make sure you are subscribed to the Auto EV channel. Then once you've done that, press the little bell button down below because in that way you'll get a notification of when our next video is uploaded and is gone live. If you have enjoyed the video, then make sure you give it a thumbs up. And don't forget, leave us your comments down below. Let us know what your thoughts are on the cars review, such as the Megane, the Peugeot and the MG and of course on the Auto EV channel as a whole. Rod, social media. Yeah, we can also find us on social media, Instagram, uh, Facebook. We're even dabbling in TikTok, but you know, bear with us on that. Um, <laughs> we, have to, we are a bit old for that. <laughs> we need some kids with us. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, thank you for following, and yeah, that's where you find the information. And Charlie, if you can talk over the Volkswagen Tig one that's driving past yeah. us now. <laughs> Just wait for that to pass. Um, <laughs> Yeah, YouTube, do check it out. We've got tons of reviews on there and they're all really interesting. So do check that out. All that remains for me to say is on behalf of Rod, Charlie and myself, thank you for watching. Thank you, thank you for continuing to support Auto EV. We'll see you again soon.